Hello and welcome. If this is the first time you've been with us, my name is Keith Thompson. I'm with the Armadale Church of Christ here in Western Australia. We're very happy to have you here. We're continuing with our study on the parables of Jesus Christ. And today we're going to be looking at the parable of the marriage feast. Now, now sometimes people ask me, Keith, why, why do you do all your videos out here in the bush? Well, simply stay this because I love it out here. And every aspect of nature, we see uh, evidence of God in every leaf, every branch, every tree. We can see God's fingerprint. My friends, this doesn't happen just by accident over billions and billions of years. There is a greater being than us. And the Bible re uh, reveals that to us as God. And Jesus, through his parables, teaches us a great deal. Now, the parable of the marriage feast is one of the kingdom parables. It tells us about the kingdom of God, which is the church here on earth. And we find it over in Matthew chapter 22. We're going to be reading verses 1 through to verse 14. And we read there. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. And he sent out his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding feast, and they were unwilling to come. Again, he sent out other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Behold, we have pre I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fattened livestock are all, stock are all butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went their way, one to his own farm, uh, another to his business. And the rest seized his slaves and mistreated them and killed them. But the king was enraged and sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and set their city on fire. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those who are invited are not worthy. Go therefore to the main highway and as many as you find there invite to the wedding feast. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered together all they found, and behold, and both evil and good, and the wedding hall was filled with dinner guests. But when the king came in and looked over the dinner guests, he saw a man who was not dressed in wedding clothes. And he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him out into outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. That last verse, verse 14, is the key to it all. This is what it's all about. Many are called, but few are chosen. Now the gospel is for all. God sent his son to, into the world to die for all people. All are called, but there are only few are chosen. And this, this parable gives us a key into what it takes to be chosen to be members of the kingdom of God. So let's look at this parable. Okay, so you have a king who's uh, uh, setting up a wedding feast for his son. I'll put it to you that the king is the heavenly father and the son is Jesus Christ. And he invites uh, many people to come. Now, God's chosen people were the Jewish nation. And he sent many times out his prophets to call them to come back to him. And when Jesus came, he sent John the Baptist he sent uh, Jesus himself, he sent the apostles, and they all rejected the call to come. And so having done that, then God called the Gentiles, the rest of the world. Notice what it says in uh, verses 8 and 9. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those who are invited are not worthy Go, therefore, into the main highways, and as many as you find there, invite to the wedding feast. This goes back to uh, the Great Commission, where Jesus said, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. We have to go and preach the gospel. This is what it's talking about. Okay, now, the wedding feast is the end of the age. 
Everyone's gathered together there. And, and, and one of the things in Eastern weddings, especially the wedding of a king's son, is that with the invitation came a set of wedding clothes so that you could be present in the clothes that were suitable for such a great occasion. The king comes in and he's looking at the crowd and it must have been magnificent and it will be magnificent on the day of the Lord. But he sees one man not dressed in wedding clothes. And he says, friend, how did you come in here without wedding clothes? And he was speechless. He had no excuse. There is no excuse. God has given us everything. We're invited to his wedding feast of his son. We have to come to him in the way that he wants us to come. Notice what it says in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. This is another picture of the same scene. This, these people are invited to the wedding feast. These people are standing before the Lord on the day of judgment. But he gives them this warning. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. It's the Father's wedding feast. We come using his rules. We come obeying him. You know, there are many people to say today, oh no, we don't have to obey the Bible because we're, we're under grace, not under law. That's just foolish. The king tells us what to do. We need to do what he says. It doesn't matter what we do if it's not found in the scriptures. We'll be cast out and there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, what about the wedding clothes? Uh, what do the wedding clothes refer to? What is that talking about? Well, in Galatians chapter 3, in verse 27, we read, For all of you uh, who were baptized into Christ Jesus have clothed yourself with Christ. <laughs> uh, the wedding clothes of Christ himself. We have to be baptized into Christ. And then we are clothed with Christ. Oh, my friends. I come across many people who say, oh, you don't need to be baptized to be saved. That's just foolishness. That's not what the Bible says. You can make all sorts of excuses, but the Bible says that when we're baptized into Christ, we're clothed with Christ. Notice what the Lord himself says in Mark 16 and verse 16. He says, he who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who is disbelieved shall be condemned. We have to obey the will of the Father. And the way that we have our sins forgiven, the way that we are saved, the way that we are clothed with Christ is by being baptized by immersion in water for forgiveness of sins. My friends, all, all are called to the wedding feast. We all are called, but few are chosen. Those that are chosen are those who come in obedience to Christ Jesus, our Savior. Well, if you have any questions about this uh, parable or anything else, put them in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe and come back. We have these videos each week and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you next time.